Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, ADHD and Attention Coach, Jeff Copper. Today, I wanna talk to you about uh, emotions, symptoms, root cause, and try to give you guys a little bit of insight uh, to kind of help you problem solve a little bit more. Out in the uh, internet, um, there's lots of things out there that are designed to catch your eye. Uh, why is that? Well, if you are in the ADD field and you want to get somebody's attention, you really got to appeal to people's emotions. You have to identify with that stuff and people will, will respond. Get out of the ADD world. This happens all over the place. Um, marketers are basically playing to your emotion to, um, to give you something to seek pleasure or to relieve pain. So often people with ADHD, they get caught up in something like, like a label, like rejection sensitivity dysphoria. I don't really want to, to get a lot into that, but when you have a title like rejection sensitivity dysphoria, it puts a spotlight on rejection. And when you focus on it, it's as I say, you know, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Emotionally, you, it kind of sometimes can take you into a, a deeper place because you dwell on that a bit. Again, I'm just using that as kind of an emotional example. But there's other labels that people identify. Like, like I, My favorite is time blindness. Okay, Symptomatically, people with ADHD, they look like they don't have any sense of time. And they kind of don't. But when you think about time blindness and you think about how do you manage that with maybe alarms and clocks and all that type of stuff, it's really kind of symptomatic type things. Understanding working memory, um, particularly visual imagery, you can begin to understand the root problem of time blindness often, not always, goes to working memory. Let's talk about this for a second. Working memory, particularly visual imagery, is the ability to create a picture, to visualize the future. It's a lot of effort in that. So think about it, like I have an appointment this afternoon and you have to imagine, all right, I've got to get up from my desk. I've got to get my keys. I've got to get into the car. How long is it going to take me to get there? I got to park my car. I got to go up the elevator. I got to go in. I got to sit down. Hmm. I might need to be there at one o'clock, but I got to think through all that stuff and realize I need to leave 25 minutes early. You do that for multiple things in a day, or you sit down and say, you know, I need to write an essay. And you don't really stop and visualize the time that it takes to put that stuff together. The point really is, is you don't analyze it. You don't put it together. You don't visualize it. You escape the thinking part. Why is this important? Well, a clock's not going to manage time for you. Um, you're going to have to manage time and participate. And I find a lot of people are using these, looking for these things that it's going to do it for them. But if you actually recognize that time blindness is a working memory issue, if you externalize it in some way, whether you're talking to somebody or doing a timeline or something, it begins to make a lot of sense. Oh, wait a second. That's why we have planners and stuff, or we externalize it. Um, the idea here really is, is to help you understand is that we often in the world have these emotional labels that we're attracted to. Yeah, I'm time blind. But if you dwell on that, you'll find that it's not really going to lead you to uh, really resolving that issue other than just trying this and trying that, but throwing spaghetti against the wall. But if you can begin to sit and kind of, hmm, what does the future look like? And how am I going to externalize that in a way that makes sense for you? Um, then it's helpful. Well, what makes sense for you? Well, look in the past. Anytime that you've ever been able to plan the future, visualize that like on paper, a diagram, a timeline or whatever, that probably works. That's a place to start. So anyway, the focus is this really video is to help people understand that marketers are coming up with terms and stuff that emotionally catch your eye, but don't really help you resolve that problem. You've got to think a little bit deeper into that. And uh, I find uh, if you understand executive functioning and you understand its role, then you can actually get to the root cause. So with that, I uh, hope that's given you pause to think and some insights. Always love comments. Comments really help us to drive some of our content in this channel. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we release a tip each week um, that's really like this, insight, like mindset, uh, sometimes strategies, et cetera. Also, uh, hit the thanks button for if you'd like to make a contribution. Uh, we take a lot of pride in what we do. Uh, we don't accept money for it. We're just doing this. And so, again, we would certainly appreciate your support. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Attention Talk Video. Take care.